Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sandbox Wednesday stream. I am Alex, and we are joined by Joseph over here, bopping in the corner. How's it going, Hi, Alex. Joseph? How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I'm doing well. We do so <laughs> late. You know what I mean? That's, We've done you this know, before. That's, so many times. That's how it goes. You're actually you're looking a little you're looking a little ghostly today. I think. Am uh, I ghostly? Am I pale and white? No, no. I mean, you're a little transparent. You know, we can uh, transparent. We'll, Oh we'll, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. see we'll, I'm ethereal. We'll we'll bring you back. We'll bring you back. A little ethereal. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Spooky. Okay. All right, we're we're back. I'm still transparent. I'll fix it on my Alex. Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh I know I know the way. <laughs> All right. How are you doing, Alex? Oh, there's so much stuff going on. It's I can't even think straight. So <laughs> let's hop over to uh to the news. Uh, so this, uh, this morning, well, it depends on where you are in the world. It was morning for me. Uh, a new bunch of NFTs dropped from the artist MJD Voxel, and she, uh, brought some really cool stuff to the marketplace. Uh, some of it's already sold out. So we've got this beautiful Oracle Skyship. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You guys get a better really view. Like it's really nice. Uh, this doesn't even like really show the cool animation that it can do. Let's let's take a peek at that real quick. Uh, so this this was a one of one, sold out pretty quickly, and uh, it does this beautiful little flappy flap animation. So very cool uh, thing to have floating around your Oracle themed city. And uh, my children are screaming over there. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but they're. Hello? They're, they're grandfather's visiting, so things are getting a little nuts over there. Um, <laughs> uh, she also did this energy miner. Uh, so so I uh, my, my claim to fame here is, is I helped write the blurb for this. Uh, so in Sand Date 2315, scientists discovered how to harness ambient power out of thin air using rare crystals in a sandium frame. So you might see words like sandium popping up. Uh, that's been That's been my... Uh, unobtainium for the sandbox universe that, that's a different game the sandbox metaverse um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so so you might see sandium pop up every now and then uh, sand date I just kind of made that up so uh, yeah anyway we're we're, bu we're building some some interesting lore around this stuff um, or trying to and uh, I think it's I think it's fun to connect these assets in kind of a, a narrative um, then we've got the Oracle Gateway. Oh, I believe the I believe this sold out also. Um, that one I think actually five. I think has three right now. The Energy Miner. Uh, well, the Energy Miner is gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Energy Miner. The gone. Oracle Ship is sold out. The Land Shark that you'll get to. Uh, yep. Oracle Gateway does have three left, so you can snag this. It uh, is it's like a portal uh, that you could put on the edge of your land and. Uh, have it take people over to the next map. Uh, beautiful pattern work here. A nice little animation. MJDV is one of our one of our rising stars in the Creator Fund. Uh, I don't remember when she joined. Uh, she hasn't been with us too very long, but uh, but she's been doing some amazing amazing work. Um, then we've got the land shark. You thought you were safe once you got out of the ocean, but shark attack. There it is. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, this is a pretty stony looking shark boy here, and uh, that is also sold out. It's thirty copies, and finally we have got uh, sweet girl Sakura, uh, who wants to move to the Paris hub after graduating college. Uh, so. That is uh, still got 19 copies, so you can still pick that one up as a um, one of our advanced NPC slash player characters. So you could use this as a uh, an NPC in your world, or you could make it a custom avatar uh, if you decided to make a game that way. So um, lots of possibilities with that. So go check those out. Um, did we go over what the energy miner does? The energy miner does whatever the person who bought it or people who bought them because there were uh, five uh, decide to do with them. So uh, I believe it has power. Yeah, it has power gems, defense gems, speed gems. So uh, the way these gems break down, 
The power gems usually affect things like attack or range. Um, they have a, a couple different uh, things that, that power can impact. Um, so uh, you could use different behaviors to take advantage of these in different ways. Defense usually deals with health. Uh, so uh, if you wanted this to be in kind of like a strategy game, uh, like a tower defense or something, you know, you could put more health on it with that defense gem. Uh, so either it takes longer for the player to break it or for enemies to break it um, to progress through the game. And then speed is usually used for like moving platforms. So if you wanted to make this like a, like a tank type thing, sliding along the ground, uh, you would be able to make it move faster with additional speed gems. Um, you could also not use any of those specifically. You could just make it decorative. Uh, you can make it part of the, the narrative um, without it, you know, performing a function from the gems. So there's, there's lots of different, you can use these assets in whatever you want. Uh, you could make a giant like Star Wars Star Destroyer and have these be cannons lining the side of it in your game if you wanted to. So uh, the possibilities are pretty endless there. Uh, we and also if you guys oh, yeah, uh, want to know more about this artist, uh, their official Twitter handle is in the chat. You can click that. Uh, I linked it so that you can go see more about what they maybe are creating or follow them, ask them questions, things like that. They may uh, get back to you. No commitments on that. I don't want to add extra work to their plate, but uh, they've made <laughs> a bunch of great things and uh, they like sharing a little bit. So uh, give them some love, you know, uh, and they won't be the only artist. Uh, pu publishing into this week uh, in the marketplace we are going to have uh, I think uh, I can confirm Alex is it Ven will also be um, I'm not sure actually uh, that is uh, one of the possible artists but we've also got uh, about 60 other artists who uh, who are kind of lining up to sell things so it's um uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna be trying to have two artists every week at this point. So, so one yep. in the middle of the week, one at the end of the week. And, uh, and we're, we're just going to keep going and crank, <laughs> cranking this stuff out. Cause cool. I mean, we've got thousands and thousands of assets on the marketplace. Uh, you can see that there's already 4,642 assets and the majority of those are not minted yet. So we've got a lot of artists who have been here for either for a long time or working very quickly to make a lot of things uh if they haven't been here so long and uh almost everybody i think uh is is at a point where they could start participating in these sales we just have to uh train everybody on the minting process and make sure all their stuff is is going to work nicely so it's a whole whole big thing um <clears throat> so um let's see that was Oh, and and there's also there's still currently the other the other stuff for sale. So uh, you've got a bunch of I think 77 total assets for sale still. So a uh, bunch of artists with their their great work uh, on there. And we are trying to make improvements to the store. So we've been looking into doing a shopping cart, increasing the number of items you can buy in one uh, transaction. So if there's like a hundred of something, maybe you could buy you know two or three of them instead of just buying one. So uh, we're trying to give uh, more options to people looking to buy things uh, on the shop and to kind of mitigate the, uh, the gas fee issues that we're having right now. So uh, on to the next thing. Ooh. Yes. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, so what we had talked about on last stream was that it was uh, Easter had just happened or was about to happen, I guess, at that point. It was on Saturday. Um, so we had started making this uh, chocolate bunny and I am going to show who's going to be getting these chocolate bunnies. We only had, uh, uh, I think eight people, nine people, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight people uh, apply to get these things. And uh, all they had to do was show me a screenshot of uh, the bunny in the game maker or on, uh, on OpenSea showing that they owned a copy of it. Uh, so we're going to share their screenshots. So uh, from, Bitcoin, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, uh, some cute bunnies uh, in the city template here. Um, first glance, I thought this was Link because I saw the green and I thought it was like the, the hood. Uh, I don't I don't know. I guess I have Legend of Zelda on the mind. Um, so <laughs> we've got some we've got some bunnies in the city 
from Bitcoin here. Uh, from uh, Cherubinuko. Um, sorry if I'm not saying that right. Uh, we have got uh, Easter Bunny showing on uh, on their OpenSea here. Uh, we've got a couple bunnies from IBO or classicalism, depending on which. I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to say here, <laughs> uh, but uh, they've got it in the uh, lake. This the name of this one changed. The name of this template changed, and I think it used to be called like Forest Pond or Forest Lake, something like that. I don't remember what it's called right now, uh, but they've got the bunnies on a beautiful sunrise there. We've got a very spooky Easter scene. Uh, made me think of Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, we've got the bunnies on the ceiling here, uh, hanging out with uh, some other bunny characters. We've got bunnies on the wall. We've got bunnies with uh, balloons. Um, oh, they've got a bunch of the bonsai trees. Um, bunnies all over the place. I mean, it's it kind of the way of the bunny. Um, so we've got that from GP115C24. We've got uh, Bob here. Nice, easy name. Uh, showing alongside some of the <laughs> uh, assets that were uh, for sale on this pre-sale that launched last week. Not pre-sale. It's, it's just a sale sale. The beta the marketplace sale. sale. The regular sale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no Seals Money Back uh, also has a bunny from their OpenSea. Cosmogrog, familiar name here, has uh, got bunny and a happy easter truck i haven't seen this one before it's got a giant carrot on top i'm curious where this came from i don't know if Cosmog cosmogrog made that or if that's from the marketplace i haven't seen that one before yeah there's a there's a very good chance that cosmogrog created it and then got it approved or or because they are now an artist thanks to the game jam right uh oh. so yeah they could have created that happy easter truck just for that picture right there you never know <laughs> Uh, yeah, Cosmogrog says Santa has always been jealous of Easter, hence the photobomb. He did try to hide behind the tree, though. Uh, so you've got Santa kind of popping out in the corner here. And we've got some flashing coins in there. Some some, fami oh. some familiar stuff. What's that? Oh, Cosmo said that uh, that wasn't them. They found it in the market. Oh, okay. I, there's, so I used to review, I used to hand review or eyeball review every single asset that went on the marketplace and it just became too much. So I've, there's actually like a team of several people who do that now and I'm on other projects. And, uh, and so go. I get to get surprised by these cool things popping up in the marketplace, just like the rest of you. Um, and finally, I, I could be much louder, but I don't want to eat the mic. Just, just snack on it a little bit. Snack. <laughs> <laughs> Snack the mic. I'm gonna blow out your ears, Alex. I'm. I can actually. I'll just turn up your level a little bit. All right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Um, All right. <laughs> and uh, finally, we've got James Hallett, who, uh, if you look really closely, I don't know if you can see it. If maybe if you're full screen, there's a bunny oh, hiding yeah. out on this ice <laughs> shelf, uh, looking, looking pretty lonely up there in this. Uh, Chill. This, Chilling. Just you know? chill, chilling on the the icy surfaces next to the next to the lava. So it looks like they're building something pretty intense for platforming there. Um, so we look forward to seeing what that is later. So uh, those are going to get minted shortly. Um, let's see. Now it is it is a Wednesday, so normally it's a gaming Wednesday. We can either finish off uh, making the bunny which shouldn't take too long and maybe upload and mint it live, or we can save that for Saturday um, and, uh, and go straight into gameplay. What, what does, what does the chat feel like? What are we, what are we thinking? I'm going to get Voxa to open just in case. All right. We'll, well see. Alex, I, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if we mentioned it in this stream, but uh, we did, I think we did some tweeting about it personally, you and I, uh, I know that I notified people on my own live stream yesterday when you DM'd me saying that version 0 0.06 of the Game Maker is now live. We didn't even talk about that. <laughs> we did not, and that's okay. Uh, if you go over to sandbox.game, you can now download version 0 0.06, which includes fun features like uh, fixing everything that broke in the last patch and 
<laughs> parrying in the uh, mechanics of combat. Uh, there are lots of things introduced in 0 0.06, uh, but the extent of those things, I honestly, uh, I've forgotten because it's been about <laughs> two weeks since we had our presentation for what will come uh, or what is now out. And that was about an hour and a half presentation in and of itself. So there's a bunch of stuff, uh, a lot of back-end things for sure. But you can be sure that your presets, I think that's the terminology I want to use, your presets should work again. If you had issues with that, uh, you should have uh, a fine functional murderous lava if uh, that's what you want. <laughs> uh, you can also make your water uh, damaging again, Andy, in that fun game that you made, if uh, you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yes, Morgan is Batman, knows exactly what I'm talking about. Fixing everything they broke in the last patch is 80% of software development. I support you. Well done. <laughs> so we have uh, the news about the... I, I'm going to read this question in chat. Uh, have you uh, got news about Coin Market, Captain? So I had mentioned before that the dashboard team uh, was working on the marketplace in a previous stream. Uh, that dashboard team, which is what we call the website team, uh, they will continue to be working on that landing page because the landing page, instead of just making one for Coin Market Captain, we're bundling all of them together, all the giveaways that we've ever done, so that you know if you've been eligible for anything. Um, so that uh, we talked about it a bit on. Uh, Monday, but not on a stream, but in my meeting. Uh, so it is coming soon still. Uh, just got pushed because we wanted to make sure that we had the marketplace clean, finished, ready, and going. So. All right. That motorcycle is definitely where I am this yeah, time. Fargo's, oh. if you send the <laughs> screenshot before it's minted, you may still be eligible. I'm not. Alex is in charge of that, so he'd have to confirm, but. Uh, I'm just uh, yeah we'll do we'll we'll do um <clears throat> I am going to mint so so like I said we had uh nine people submit or, or eight mm -hmm. people submit one person had bought two bunnies so I said okay you can you can have a, a chocolate bunny for each um so I'm going to mint 15 and one is going to go to the original artist of the Easter bunny um I'm going to keep one because I, I bought a bunny. Uh, and you and, made it, uh, right? You made the art, so you should be able to keep well, yeah, the chocolate Yeah, that too. Bunny. That too. <laughs> uh, and then the rest will go to uh, whoever sends me those screenshots. So we've got the, the people who are who I showed on screen earlier. If you send them to me before uh, or as, as, as soon as possible, all you have to do is show me either that you have it in OpenSea um, or that you have it in the Game Maker. Either way, I'll know that you will have gotten one. Um, and, uh, oh, James Hallett has three bunnies. Oh, we may need to recount the, uh, mm, three bunnies, three. Yeah. Maybe we'll save minting for Saturday. Right. And we can get yeah. into some gaming. Let's you finish art here. Let's mint then, on uh, Saturday. You've got till the end of this, the stream today to, uh, to tweet at me and Joseph with your screenshot of either open sea or, um, uh, the game maker with it in the game maker. We prefer seeing it in the game maker because we want to see what you're doing. We want to see, you know, show us what you got. Uh, but if uh, if you send that before the end of the stream, uh, then you will go into the final tally for Saturday when we mint. How's that sound? Cool. And and we that will. Nice. I, I will check everybody's uh, addresses on OpenSea to see how many you have. So you'll get as many chocolate bunnies as Easter bunnies that you bought. Um, and then you can give them to friends. You could do whatever. Uh, yeah, James, that was a new rule. So we didn't we didn't establish a rule that people could get more than one if they bought more than one bunny. I didn't think that anybody was buying more than one bunny, which silly me. Why wouldn't I <laughs> think that? <laughs> so, um, I mean, they did go very fast, and we hadn't established this ahead of time, so it was kind of like a like a surprise thing. So, uh, so yeah, somebody uh, one of the other entries asked me. Like, hey, I bought two bunnies. So I was like, eh, yeah, I guess we can do that. So uh, Saturday, we'll do a final count after I get everybody's wallet addresses, and we'll do the mint on Saturday. Um, so real quickly, we're just going to finish off 
uh, the last animation here. So we we had done the the peaking animation on last stream, and now we everybody was like, it needs glowing red eyes. It needs to be like, you know, Monty Python evil bunny or something. So mm -hmm. uh, so we duplicated the head model. We uh, changed the color of the eyes to be this red with uh, the emissive color on it. And uh, we're going to crop that down. And we're going to place the pivot right in the center. Right-clicking on the pivot tool. Pivot center. That way it's nice and easy to control. Um, anyone else having issues logging in on sandbox.game? So... Uh, the website was down for a few minutes earlier today. Um, I think a, an update was getting uh, pushed and it kind of like kicked everything for a minute. You should be able to get in now. Uh, usually I suggest um, flushing your browser cache uh, or possibly logging out of your wallet and logging back in. So if you have MetaMask, you can, uh, uh, you know, log it out. Some people have even just like, some people have had issues where they had to just like reset their router. Not that I recommend you do that during the stream because then you'll miss out on what we're doing but uh, uh sometimes that has helped um so uh yeah i'm not uh i haven't had any logging in issues i just had an issue where the website was down for about mm, not even five minutes i think um so maybe that has something to do with it all right so we're adding a new no a new node red eyes And we're attaching our red eyes to that. Now, okay, you see these are kind of glowing in the neck. So we want these to be up by default. We're, we're actually, we're going to, whoops, I didn't click on red eyes yet. We're going to move these up here first and see where they're going to be. So we want them at 3.5. And then we're going to push them back in the head. Um, we do want to go back to our idle animation and make sure that these are up inside the head so they don't appear. And same with the peaking animation, we'll push them up into the head. So now all of those animations look okay. No, no red eyes sneaking out when it's being cute and adorable and chocolatey. And let's go back to evil. All right, so it's the same animation. It's going to peek out, but we want to move all of this stuff later. So you see that we've got this gap down here where nothing happens at the beginning. Move my head out of the way. So we're going to select all these keyframes. So we shift click on them and we're going to we're going to zoom out. So that way it's easier for us to select all. And we're just going to grab all of these and we're going to drag them further towards the end so we have time for the glowing red eyes to come out so we give that a bit more time i say like one second for the start of it doesn't it's it's kind of a thing you develop a feel for um and that you can adjust until it is just right uh you don't have to uh there's no like mathematical reason why i have it at one second here so we've got this one second of wiggle room to start this animation before it looks around. So we're going to give a keyframe for the red eyes and we want the red eyes to pop out. So we're going to select that node and bring the eyes out. Okay. And we'll see how much time that takes in the animation here. That felt about right, I think. And then we want to give it a pause at the end and let the eyes recede back into the head. So we clicked the keyframe button down here. Get my head out of the way again. <laughs> this little diamond button here uh, to add just a keyframe at the exact same position. And then we're going to click on the first frame and alt drag it all the way to the end, which is going to give us the receding animation as the eyes go back. And then we're going to go to the five second mark and add keyframes for everything. So it's just nice and cleanly capped off. Um, I like putting some, some exports uh, prefer like GLTF 
in some renderers prefer that you have ending keyframes on all the nodes. So I kind of do it out of habit. Um, it's not super necessary within the sandbox game maker itself to have that. Uh, but usually I'm doing stuff in renders also. Uh, and this diamond, this diamond that looks hollow at the top of the list of all the nodes will actually do a keyframe across all nodes at the same time, or at least all nodes that you can see um, in your in your view. All right, so let's play that back. Evil eyes, looks around, comes back. You know, I think um, I think it's more sinister if it has a little bit more time before the eyes recede. So we're gonna do that. There we go. I like that little bit more of a delay on it. And uh, what's going on here? What's what's up with this? For some reason, this keeps on. It thinks it has an animation, or it doesn't. It's not sure. I don't think there's any difference between this frame and this frame. <laughs> I think that's just maybe a visual bug. All right, so we're gonna save, and we want. Uh, now, now here's the question, and this is I'm gonna I'm going to ask this question of the people that are uh, receiving this. Do you want on OpenSea? Do you want people to see the evil animation or the peaking animation? Because uh, we can only pick one. OpenSea only displays one animation from Sandbox Assets, and um, whatever you have set as the default animation uh, is going to be what goes over to OpenSea. So, so on the sandbox, if you name the animation idle, that is the animation that it kind of defaults to um, in the game maker. So when we put this in the game maker, it's going to use this static idle. Um, I'm actually going to add a key there. Even though there's no change, this this will help set up the correct collision. Um, so I can set default in here, which will be what OpenSea registers as the animation to play. So um, I see somebody saying Five Nights at Freddy's, and yeah, I think we're, we're kind of in that bit. aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so if you're thinking about how you want people to see this on OpenSea, do you want people to see this or do you want people to see this what do you think joseph um i personally i think it should be the evil eyes but i don't know alex this is a tough one because <laughs> Somebody oh, might be a... put off a little bit by the evil eyes, potentially. But then right. they could also choose to just not use evil eyes. So it's not a big deal. Like, that's just their, you know, designer choice. So I think maybe no evil eyes and then, like, just name it Evil Bunny or something uh, mm -hmm. when it gets minted. That way people know, <laughs> like... Or like evil chocolate, evil choco bunny, or something like okay. that. You know what I mean? Well, let's so like it has the no eyes. It does the animation, and then they're like, "This doesn't look evil to me." Surprise! <laughs> it's evil, and it's going to murder Surprise. you later. Uh, so yeah, we've got some similar thoughts in the in the chat here. So so James Hallett, who is one of the people getting these, uh, says uh, says the peaking. Um, Oh, but change but changed it to red eyes of movement. Cosmogrog mm -hmm. says non evil. Uh Holly Voxels kind of basically said what you said. Do it do it uh without the evil eyes, so it's a surprise in in the game. Um mm -hmm. which whoever owns it is gonna be the person who, you know, sets it up to to do the evil eyes in the game. Yeah. Andy Ritchie says normal. Uh James says fun either way. Giddy Gat says evil. <laughs> So we've got dark, hmm. dark, really dark, evil split. chocolate bunny. <laughs> what do you we could think, just call Alex? it the dark we chocolate bunny. Into a, maybe we should turn this into a Twitter poll. Take uh, the two yeah. animations, put them up, 
in the same tweet. Make sure a poll we can about do that. We'll do that after because the stream. They're not going to get minted until Saturday, right? So the decision could be made. And then we say, okay, the results of that poll is. Yeah, that sounds uh, good. It really seems pretty even. So I like the sound of that. So after uh, after the stream, it'll take a few minutes for me to record the animation. But after the stream, we'll um, we'll put up a Twitter poll and ask uh, for for votes. And because uh, I, I think everybody's kind of split. Like we do, we we do have we have good reasons on both sides for this. So uh, we will leave it up to the community to decide. You got to rally your votes for whatever your your opinion is. We're just going to save this as it is now. We'll upload it on Saturday and mint it on Saturday. And uh, now we've got half an hour to jump into games. So let's do that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to save. We're going to exit Vox Edit. We're going to open up 0 0.6.0. Uh, Snakebox, I don't think a link was shared yet. Unless it was done unannounced. Okay uh stencil architect uh if this uh has been a commonly reported problem which uh i believe that it probably would be uh then i will uh get it forwarded over but being as it just released yesterday um it's probably not i mean it's probably just getting on the radar this morning so uh, this it could be something issues? that's hot fixed no, uh, in the Game Maker latest update, they're saying that uh, they can't use asset presets right now. Uh, yes, that's a known issue. Um, so the there's some issue with presets that they need to fix. Um, so they're temporarily locked out. You might notice that the the user interface is still there. You can still create presets um or change presets but you can't change what preset is being selected by a spawner or by a drop um uh there's a little padlock next to it so that will hopefully be returning very soon i will try to get an eta on that um and let let everybody know on saturday uh but i i honestly don't know what what the issue is or how long it'll take to fix so um it i'm i'm hoping desperately hoping that it's going to be uh available for everybody working on the game jam stuff because i know a lot of our our advanced um uh game designers are like rely on it very heavily like cyber dragon and, and others so um yeah so we're gonna tr we're gonna try really hard to make sure the those presets come back um and i will try to get yep. an eta for you so that way because it, it affects saving also if you have presets already in your game um you might not be able to save uh so that's that's kind of a big issue so i will try to get an update on that as soon as possible um you can't create presets at all the button doesn't open the menu that's um i'm pretty sure it works there's no so there's no uh presets mentioned in the library right now but if you go to um Am I in demo right now? I'm in demo. I need to fix that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if you go to your hierarchy, you can save to preset, create new, and uh, it is in there. Um, but you're just not able to select it from the behavior settings. So uh, yeah. Uh, equipment. So equipment is something I was actually working on right before stream. Hopefully by the end of the week, that will be all resolved. Uh, we have new, so kind of in combination with this art, um, uh, type that we have on the marketplace. We also have an, a new equipment type, uh, which is how the game maker now recognizes whether something is an equipment or not. Uh, but all previously uploaded equipments don't have that attribute on them yet so that needs to get fixed across all of them so uh when i'm done with the stream i'm going and after i make that poll uh i'm going to continue working on equipments and hopefully we can get a batch script running on that to change all of the old equipments to the new equipments um so that way by the end of the week uh all the equipment that you used to be able to use should be working again um at least that's the goal um, so I need to uh, actually, there may be exit game companies are eligible for the game jam. So if you are 
a group of up to four developers, you are eligible uh, and you can, if, you know, for a game company, typically that would mean just like picking a small team and saying like, this is what we want to do to create, right? Um, but, uh, you know, any devs are encouraged to come in and that's part of why the prize is so high for the first place because we want to see uh, the community internally right organically growing uh and then having these big purses to bring new people in to the ecosystem you know saying like you've never heard about it before but now you just heard of this game jam uh, and you might pause a project for you know a month uh, and work on a game here in the sandbox publish that maybe use it as a jumping off platform for your other games uh like a cross branding like using the same themes things like that um but absolutely. And again, anybody who is a uh, game jam creator can have an artist uh, or multiple artist approved accounts. So that means that you'll be able to create your own custom assets uh, and then you can get them approved. Um, as it stands, when you create custom assets and you submit them, uh, they should not be submitted with catalysts or gems intended to go on them. Um, and Alex and I are going to have a deeper conversation about that right after this stream. Um, but right now, uh, you will not be able to mint, meaning you won't be able to individually serialize them as NFTs uh, for these arts. This is just creating the art, putting it in the marketplace so that you can see it with your gallery upload and other people will be able to play with the assets that you custom create for this jam. Uh yeah, and Jeremy, concerning uh, groups of like a dozen employees, I believe the Game Jam rules say that the team can be a maximum of four people. Um, yep. So if you and notice like realistically, that... Realistically, there's not a way to do that as well, right? Like um, if you are creating your game, the only way for someone else to also create in your game with the game maker is for you to send your file to them. So you're not, you know, it's not like four people can work on it at the same time, per se. It's more like uh, you could have an artist dedicated to creating box edit assets and then have someone else working on the game. And so that's a team of two and maybe a third person working on all the narrative things so that you're now you're a team of three and that person feeds the script to the game designer or whatever. Right. So there's um, there's not a great way to blow it up in a bigger scale past that uh, without just people stepping on each other and not being able to really do that at this time. Was it uh, uh, Frogger we were going to play? Yes, Frogger okay. V1. All right. Uh, so this is by Cyber Dragon. I believe he said he made it in about an hour on stream. So if you want to see how this game was created, you can go check out uh, previous streams from uh, what's, what's Cyber Dragon's account name? I don't remember. That would be the uh, Sandbox Academy. Sandbox I think Academy. it's just Sandbox Academy, but it could be the Sandbox Academy. I'd have to double check. Okay. Um, and uh, regarding minting, yes, I, I know everybody wants to get minting with stuff. We, there are a lot of um, technical d difficult things to go through with the whole minting process right now. So part of having it be our creator fund in-house artists that ha that are doing this um is that we're able to work really closely one on one with them to troubleshoot and improve the whole process so that way when we do launch this live which is planned for this year for everybody to be able to mint their stuff uh that it's a whole smooth process for everybody um because uh it can be very frustrating <laughs> to within in the beta environment to do this stuff and uh we don't want that for our users so uh yeah, yeah it's uh it, it, it will and be worth the wait in the end. Exactly. And that's a huge thing to remember is that while we are going through the, the development on this, uh, you can see the release in the top right. We're at 0 0.60, which is to that's that's like saying, hey, we're not even in full completion of the first version yet. Right. So oh, this is interesting. Yeah. You you can't you can't barely touch the water. <laughs> yeah, it's like but that's uh, kind of Frogger like, right? 
It's just like that yeah. uh, the one that was like the hardest game ever that you played on right, stream. Right, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Can't touch the walls, don't touch the water, you know? No. That may be able to be avoided, and it seems like maybe that's the case, but I can't tell if the uh, logs and the ground floated above the water more. Yeah, that's what I was then thinking. Then it would be less uh, <laughs> A little punishing. Less, yeah, if you just... Yeah, you can't. Like you would actually have to fall <laughs> off. Because I think in the old Frogger, even though you couldn't get to like the edge of a log, you also had to properly jump off into the water in order to die. And so you would fall. Yeah. Um... Oh. No. Oh. I could have made that. Oh, I see it now. I see it. Thank you for the link, Grifted One, over on Twitch. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Linking the Game Maker. It's <laughs> twitch.tv slash Game Maker Academy. Did the log just go off without you right there? That's I was funny. like, I was like, oh no, I need a log. I need a log. And then the log came out and I stepped on it and it was just like, yeah, you're moving too slow, dude. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. And uh, excuse me. Uh, Holly Voxels in the chat says log. So, uh, if you are the developer of this game and you are watching right now, I don't know that Cyber Dragon is. They may be. They do live in Australia. It could be late enough for them. I think it's pre um, pretty late there. <laughs> just just keep in mind that uh, the it's actually really early. Oh, really? Yeah, it depends on how. Yeah, it depends yeah. on how you define early but, and late. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Alex is the guy who wakes up or goes to bed at 6 a.m. because they've been working so hard for I, us every single I, day. I didn't want you know? to. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know. Well, happens. no, I do want it to happens. work. I want to work hard for everybody, but I right. I didn't. Right, 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 I didn't right, mean right. to stay yeah. up till six a.m. It's just, uh, you know, oh. get get in the groove, and then you see the sun start rising, and it's like, oh, time to get in my coffin. Like, so if you wanted to make a top-down game like this, that is more like Frogger, the important thing to probably understand there. is that you are still at least with a uh, one by one. You're operating with 96 meters, uh, you know, space where each block is a meter. So you could make a pretty long Frogger-like level. Um, but if you do that, uh, you'll want to make sure your main platform is uh, on a 3D view a little higher. Uh, and then your water is lower. So you actually have to fall off of the logs or off of the land before you die. Because I think this is just a bit yeah. preemptive. And Alex is clearly showing that right here live on our stream. So yeah, 4:43 in the morning in Bangkok. That's uh, that is pretty early. Pretty early. Are you watching from there right now? Welcome to the show. Well, you've been here the whole time, of course. But oh, that's it's weird because there's no ground texture on the pavement, so you can't see. You have no uh, sense of yeah. speed. <laughs> All right, uh, Alex made it over the water. The most basic expectation, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think that's I think that's it because I don't can see. You, can you make it across the road? Yeah, no, it's easy. Did it just like it's barely an inconvenience? Oh, oh, wait, oh, there's no? okay. there's another. All right. Wait, there's another there... place here. What's this? Oh, it's water. Oh no, that's the Something's edge of the map. Happening. There's there's something over there, but I have to go into the water to get there. I, I think uh, I think this is just because it's the because the first version. I think it isn't completed oh, past there. Yeah. But I like a, looking for some more. I dig this though. This is. Uh, yeah, I think this is a good idea. And the meaning you know, to make things the, the, the like car, this. The cars kill you, right? I just want to be sure. Like break the game real quick. Get hit by a car. Oh, I know. There we go. <laughs> oh. It took a second. Okay. The water is more deadly than cars, which hmm. I don't know. There's you know? there's probably more. Maybe there's probably statistics on that. Are, <laughs> is is falling off of logs I mean, into water? I mean, hundred percent of people who drink water die. Is all I'm yes. saying. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, so. Uh, Nemo, that map, the map is still custom made. Uh, you can always make the map however you like when you go into the game maker. Um, and it's actually easier than ever to make custom maps. There's like big, almost paintbrush like swaths you can just draw right across. Um, 
And then this is a, one of the listed camera features where you're doing top down. So it's a little bit more classic arcade gamey. Um, and there's nothing saying that a game like this, where it is top down, uh, would be incompatible with our seasonal content. So if you were making something and you wanted to make sure that it still stayed in season, or if you wanted to make something that you felt like uh, was a little bit fresh or different, you can do top down like this. You can do first person games. Uh, so just look at uh, look at a few different uh, options in there. Just play around with it. So the uh, and yes, it's it's funny because because having played Frogger a few times in my in my days, uh, oh, hmm. I didn't mean to get squished. Uh, the logs was always a lot easier for me than the cars, which makes sense because it's the first part of the level. But it's the total yeah. opposite for this. The cars are really easy for me, and the uh, the logs are really hard. And I think a yeah. big part of it has to do with size, that the the narrowness of the logs is it's right. pretty small, and uh, there's a lot of space between the cars. But it's yeah, not like Cyber Dragon you know, knows well enough to tweak just on this. The whole tile, right? Yeah, you, you just had to time it. You didn't have to worry about the accuracy as much. Um, yep. Or sliding. You know, <laughs> the, the physics of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, it's it's not like I really need to critique Cyber Dragon on this. It's just the first version he made in an hour, and, and he, he knows well enough to fix these things. So sure. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to bug him about it. So... Uh, yeah, but no, they, this is, uh, I'm, I'm having fun though. And I kind of want to like open it up and, and take a peek inside, but we can, we can actually show what the, um, so, uh, what the mechanics uh, question are for you, Alex. What's that? Is it possible to change the camera angle in a game halfway through the game? Not at this point, but I don't see why we couldn't enable that. Um, okay. so it's not a. Yeah, you can do top down or angled, and uh, top down you can actually change the distance of the camera between zero and forty-five. So zero would probably be like, yeah, you're like in my brain right now. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, I can't. I I don't see why these options couldn't be uh, switched between in the game. Yeah, this is a this is a look. <laughs> Uh, so we can and go all the way out to 45 meters, which is going to be tiny. Look at all that space. You could do a really cool, like, combat maze. You can also, uh, lock this. So in the Frogger game, this was, the, the rotation was locked. You also notice we have a new mini map, which doesn't display actual topography right now, except for, uh, the edges of your land. So it lets people sure. know how close they are to another land i'm sure that will become more advanced as time goes on it sounded like you had a question um you know i did <laughs> you know what i mean like sometimes you just get a good feeling um <laughs> <laughs> yep yep that's right you got me <laughs> you got me all right so we got a whole bunch of the messages going on uh, so while you guys are here, do you have questions from the chat um, about features, about upcoming things, about uh, the game maker, what have you? Uh, also, do you have a game you want us to play? Uh, I think there's some more in the gallery. Uh, so the point of these Wednesday streams is that we can play your games. Uh, and then when we play your games, we can give you some live critique to help make you uh, more ready for the launch of the metaverse. Uh, and or this game jam that's going on right now. So we have a game jam ongoing until May 17th. Uh, and if you are creating a game, then, uh, you know, you can uh, get that get that feedback and possibly get into the top 10. Uh, the judges in this particular contest, unlike in previous contests, are all not official sandbox staff. The judges in this contest vary from uh hugely prestigious folks all over the world uh including those working with square enix with ubisoft with a bunch of other companies uh can't think of them all off the top of my head but i like those two because i am a gamer <laughs> so i love seeing them uh so let me see i'm gonna get to these questions now something you will notice 
uh, Walt Joseph is looking for questions here, is that the lighting has been improved in the Game Maker. So the ambient reflections and stuff are a lot more subtle than they used to be. You used to kind of get like neon glows on stuff. But I just, mm. I'm really in love with this new lighting. I mean, it just looks so smooth. Um, we had, there used to be a lot of noise on the, the edges of shadows and the ambient mm. occlusion. And it's very nicely smoothed out. You know, it, it, with, with enough assets around, it feels very like toy like to me now instead of uh, like video game graphics. It, it kind of feels sure. like I'm playing with a, like a claymation thing here. Obviously a very blocky one, but. So uh, Steven over on YouTube, you asked, uh, uh, can you change the weather in the game or the time of day? So you can change the lighting. Uh, there are a few different lighting presets, but it will not have an active day night schedule. Uh, oh, I love those new attacks. Mm -hmm. Those are nice. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could, could you show them the parry feature that was added into zero six? Just drop an enemy in there real quick and have them try to hit you. Um, uh, so yeah, so I'm not as familiar with the, it's, are you talking about the breaking the shield of the, of the uh, enemy? The or? opposite block timely. And then the enemy should I be staggered that by yet. that. What is the stagger or the, the block button? Is that the right click? I think click? it's just right click. Yeah. Where is that? It, uh, no, that's controls for the builder. That's not controls for playing. Thrust um, attack, dodge, run. It doesn't show. Interesting. I think right click is block, okay. but you'll have to test and see if we'll it works because I don't know. Uh, Where's the bad I guy? Saw, I saw it in a tech demo, so you guys either get a lot of insight right now or he's going to be able to do it live. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> uh, Noam, uh, if you could leave the name of your game in the chat, we could check it out. We still got a couple of minutes here. Uh, I just want to kind of showcase some of the new things. Uh, let's see. It's like an obstacle course, you say. Uh, will we be able to remove the gems from minted assets and use them in other assets? Kirsch, we cannot use as uh, gems that you remove. You can only potentially overwrite them. You would end up burning them. Uh, An Andre Fuentes, uh, do you remember a helicopter Whoa. game that someone <laughs> tweeted a while ago? Did you do it? Ooh. Did you do the block? <laughs> So, so the block uh, has like a hundred percent effectiveness. So if, if you just hold block, you get like no damage, uh, which is kind of funny. I maybe a little OP. Um, yeah. But if you time it, then you get the perfect parry. They get a little swirly swirl above their heads. And uh, oh gosh, he has a lot of uh, a lot, a lot of, of HP. A lot of HP. Oh yeah, they do. So, Mummified warrior is a boss. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to so, keep yeah, perfect pairing uh, while you talk. <laughs> Andre, the uh, helicopter game was basically like an on rails sort of thing. Uh, I would take that as more of a showcase for like a cinematic moment. Uh, if you were to make a big game. Uh, and then I can you clarify walk on that a little bit if you want. Okay. So ahead. it wasn't so much on rails. It was more like Sonic 3D Blast. If you've ever played that game. Uh, the No. Nobody else played that no, no. <laughs> on the Sega Genesis. No. Um, so, so the, what was made was like a bunch of platforms. Uh, so if, if I get a wall here, um, of course, none of the walls have the monster attribute. Um, so the helicopter was the, um, the player. And at the very beginning, you see them, them go up and uh, that was an elevator. Uh, type asset and um, the rest of it was sliding along platforms like this uh, they were invisible so you couldn't tell that they were there um, and everything was just nicely connected up kind of like this to allow the helicopter to kind of just you know go up and down the ramps and when they're invisible um, you know, you can't, you can't tell that they're there. So it just, whoop, if I can find them, <laughs> you know, it's hard. Oh, when they're, just... There we go. <laughs> so 
So dodge the murder mummy. Dodge the murder oh, man. mummy. One whack. Yeah. One whack. Yeah. Got you good. Perfect parry. <laughs> Um, so anyway, that this it, the whole map was covered in invisible tiles like this, and the helicopter was just, you know, going up and around them. So, sure. um, so you could actually make a whole game that way if you wanted. Um, but uh, it it was it was a showcase of like potential ideas um, and things that will be possible as we get more features, um, and especially once visual scripting is there, that's gonna like unlock everything. So, so uh, as I am answering this next question. Uh, folks in the chat, <clears throat> no matter which platform you're watching on right now, there is a link that you can be eligible to win a Wizzy the Blue NFT asset. Uh, if you do not win this week, uh, just know that uh, we're doing it every week. We stream on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturdays. Uh, Monday and Saturday stream happen at 1800 GMT, and the Saturday stream, of course, is happening at 2100 G, or I'm sorry, the Wednesday stream is the 2100 GMT time. So uh, if you fill out this form, you can be eligible to win that NFT. Uh, winners can only ever win one. There is a limited quantity of 200 of Wizzy the Blue, and you can only get it here. So uh, it's just a nice way of us saying thank you for joining us here. Uh, and so if you don't win today, Feel free to like the page and or subscribe and or follow, depending on which platform you're watching on, whether it's DLive, Theta, you're watching on YouTube, maybe you're watching on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, or another service somewhere around the world. Uh, good luck to all the entrants. And I'm going to answer this question now. So uh, one of the questions came through that said, in the future, would we be able to use more than one behavior in the game maker? So if you have an asset that you want to change behaviors in the middle of, let's say, some kind of adventure, right? You want a good person to become a bad person or a quest no, giver to become something grief. else. Are you okay? What happened? Oh, that's a lot of wolves. Okay. I, see it. I was, I see not... it. I was like, you. it looks like there's a hole behind me. And oh, then they're still coming. They're still ah, coming. <laughs> So uh, that anyway, was a, that uh, was a fun you, surprise. <laughs> you can change the asset behavior halfway through by actually despawning the asset and then respawning another one, and then just change their behavior at a certain like checkpoint or maybe a proximity to an object. Did you just fall? I just oh, fell. There's there's a door. Okay. I don't think I'm supposed to be out here. Are you not? You're probably not. It doesn't look like you are. All right. So the first thing that I'm seeing in this game is that there was a pitfall. Can you? Oh, you were trying to Sonic. See, that's a that's like a Mario, our old school Sonic trick. <laughs> um, so what a pitfall means is where your level is designed in such a way that you can fall in a hole you can't get out of. Uh, and if that is the case, that is a game breaking design. Uh, can't can't call it a bug because it's not because of a bug. But if somebody has to restart your game simply on the basis of they fell down, uh, that's going to probably make it so your players won't come back. So uh, I also, I don't know if the lava is programmed to be damaging, but it should be. Um, but it looks like you're probably just right in the like, let's build a layout sort of design period. So. Uh, this happens mm. just uh it's always a good tip that we like uh. to give so that people <laughs> who are watching avoid those sorts of things oh my god first game they've ever created. <laughs> how strong is this thing i don't want to find out <laughs> whoa 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 there's a couple of them uh run <laughs> just kidding uh, <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, David Gameplay 456 says add this game maker on Android. So uh, we do intend to have the game player, uh, the game client uh, on mobiles in the future. So you can rest assured that something will come through. But as developers, generally speaking, I've never seen a game development platform on a mobile device. I so, have. Uh, but, have not, but, not, but not like this. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, right. There's 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 a few. I mean that, and they're they're super limited, heavily code based. Uh, there's like sure. an RPG maker, uh, like, oh, like yeah, similar yeah. to okay. that. That's on a. Oh, I don't think I can. I don't think uh -oh. that jumps possible. Maybe if I. It doesn't. Oh, man, that's a. 
Sad. Um, so yeah, there there are a few platforms for that on on mobile, but um, they're usually extremely limited. Um, and uh, and yeah, the the plan for now is just to bring the player to Android, not the maker to Android. Um, and and Unity games in general are usually supported okay on Android, um, so that uh, that's what our engine is based in. So I don't think it's. I mean, the, the, of course, there's going to be, uh, you know, the inevitable challenges of development, but it's not an insurmountable task when uh, when Unity games are regularly put on uh, on mobile. Can I get to this? <laughs> I love when they that? all. I think it's the magic carpet. Oh, right? I could just. It's I can like... one hit them. Yeah, I know it's the magic oh, carpet, cool. but I can't jump that high. Sure. And I was uh, trying to. That's why I went all the way around to hmm. get to there, yeah. but then that jump isn't possible because the block is underneath the platform. Yeah. Um. Well, what about up and to the left? If you look up to your left. Uh, oops. That's that's the way I went the first time. Okay. On this back wall, but I'm mm. thinking, I might. This is high. This this other platform here is higher, so I might actually be able to make the jump from here. Uh, if I time it right, so we're gonna go. Hey, hey, look at that. Oh yeah. So I I, I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> able to take no. <laughs> I wasn't able to take the path I was supposed to take, or at least uh, it looked like I was supposed to take, uh, but yep. I was still able to take a path. Well, so there's uh, a couple of quick things that I would leave for you, uh, Noam, is that obviously, uh, you know, if it's like the natural flow, you can see that Alex wanted to go through the green portion uh, and you couldn't jump up directly to that. That seems like that's the design intention for you. But... Um, they're in every wow they're just flying they're, they're like flying they're like there. ants they're there they're, yeah. they're gonna make a bridge but in every uh game that has these like platforming style things typically you have some kind of a, a special visual indicator that says hey come over here uh in the division what they did is they put like blue tarps over anything that you could climb up or like this is hey come over here in god of war i think they had like lava uh, looking effect something like that um so you know there are different ways to explore it and then the ground here uh should just be deadly just put a layer of you know or you nothing at all you lava, can you can make it totally but, empty if you fall to the oh, bottom of the true. map yeah. you'll just respawn yeah, that's so you can erase point. the whole if floor if you want it. If it's a void, then you'll have the nice like sky effect or whatever. Like you are, uh, you know, it, it, you'll just make somebody stressed out because they're gonna fall infinitely, you know. But <laughs> you won't. You'll land and boop, and there you go. So uh, that's another option. And then if you, uh, oh, I'm looking at the design here, and I'm trying to think of uh, the way it's laid out. It looks like you'll fight a couple of demons over here. But how do you get up? I think I'm supposed to take that, but it's that's not going to happen. Sure, <laughs> I'm. I, I. It would take a lot of tries for me to go from from this to this to this to this down the comb, um, and yeah, we, we'd be here for a while. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not confident enough in my my ability to <laughs> to jump around columns like that. So yeah, I think it's it think it's a good start. Uh, I loved the wolf surprise at the beginning. <laughs> that was great and hilarious. Yeah. Um, that 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 and was that was pretty good. Um, I would just you know make sure make sure that it's that you can traverse the paths that you're planning. So definitely you know test it yourself to make sure that you can get to the areas that you intend to without getting stuck. Yeah, and uh, one of the tips that you know we like to do is to um, register for another account as a game designer so that you know that the assets that you put into these games or those things uh, operate as expected for a regular user. So you, you know, you put it in, you publish it to the gallery, then you log out and you sign in with your other email uh, and then play your game that way. Then you can find everything that breaks that you didn't see as a dev 
because that happens to every developer no matter how triple a you are right you'll make this game you'll push it out you'll be like we patched all this and then they'd be like cool i broke it this way and you're like what what, what? you know <laughs> uh so so you come out with your uh with your backup account or your like user account or whatever uh and test that and then the only other thing that i would say is if you love your jump puzzle and you think that that's like it's all done and it's all good start taking the walls and give them life uh right now it's designed that you're like it looks like you're in a maybe a steel box or like a cobblestone box uh, so it doesn't have to be that way you can take uh design elements give it a texture or give it like a you know make a story that you don't have to say out loud like you know put an evil skull on the wall or something uh or things like that right like just it it gives a little more life to something or make it look like a mayan temple or whatever um so that you can say hey this is not just a, a world that someone else can put together real quick um even if again you're just doing framework and things like that and so i understand you did probably just put that together uh, and just trying to get your, you know, dip your toe in the water. But it, the the best games always have ways of telling you about that world without having to, you know, make it quite obvious. I don't know if you saw the clinically blind. Uh, I did close <laughs> the contest, yes, uh, because Ooh. we went after the hour. So now there's 175 responses right now, Jeremy. Um, but we will do more contests each and every week. And I am going to announce the winner here. Just let me go ahead and pull that up. So we got 175 responses over the course of about five minutes of this being open. So there should be quite a few people here right now. 151, user number 151 uh, in this and let me click this and these again this contest is eligible to anyone on a bunch of different platforms uh and pam interesting hmm. one second and i will get over to so over on twitch.tv the user a y n d h a m and ham has won congratulations Congratulations. We have the Ethereum address, so that'll be sent out usually once a week. Um, but sometimes the backlog gets a little long. I know Alex is super busy, and Alex has all the exclusive rights to the Wizzy, the blue asset that he created for and on, for and on this stream. So, what do you see in here, Alex, as you're running through the uh, Metal Gate? Well, I got to break, I got the key, it. but it doesn't seem like the um doesn't seem like the gate unlocked. So I'm not okay. sure what happened there. So we're going to try restarting it. Maybe I did something wrong. Okay. So we talk to this guy. Uh we tell him that we can't see the bedroll here, which is our respawn point. And we get the key. We get the ooh. <laughs> so I would maybe make uh, the anytime you put a, a platform next to lava like that, it's gonna be super temperamental to uh, to actually being able to stand in that one by one area. Yeah. Um, uh, and just it's yeah. just like the Frogger incident you had earlier, yeah. right? Like, right. Just yeah. make it one block higher, so that you know you can't accidentally touch the the property of the lava and then kill yourself here because you try with the what oh, oh. okay oh, <laughs> um so there have been some uh recent corrections uh i'm not i haven't had a chance because 0 0.6 only just came out a couple days ago to test everything but um there have been times in the past where when well, it closed again what <laughs> uh, I have a feeling that maybe something is triggering the maybe door. Maybe it opened when you touched the key. Oh, maybe. Ooh. Oh. Hey. Okay, so it appears that what's happening is that, that getting close to the key is what's setting off the message to unlock the gate. 
Um, hmm. And earlier I accidentally collected it, which meant that I can no longer get close to it because it was in my inventory. <laughs> so it wouldn't open up the gate. Maybe that's why. So um, there's a couple sure. different ways to... to and, oh, and it just closed again. So I have a feeling there's something else triggering the door besides just the key. Um, so make sure that your uh, your your stuff is getting triggered by the things you want it to. Make you know double check your messages, um, and make sure that uh, yeah, I got the key earlier. You put the key as no collision. Um, I seemed to be standing on it earlier, so I'm not sure why. Uh, if it was on no collision, I'm not sure yeah, why. Yeah, the, unfortunately, with the latest patch, and this is something that is known as well, that uh, collisions appear to reset um, back to all collisions, yes. Um, oh, fun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so there's, uh, you know, as as we mentioned in the chat earlier, right? Like 80% uh, of uh, development is going, hey, we fixed the thing that uh, broke with the last update, with the last addition, the last change. And this is kind of the normal process when you're talking about earlier, like alpha level softwares. We're still in 0 0.60. So some time to go before we get to the uh, what you would call fully functional 1.0 kind of uh, software. So we'll, we'll experience some little bumps in the road like this, but definitely nothing we can't get through. And uh, I OK, so I'm going to give some quick feedback about this because uh, there the gates open, by the way, Alex. <laughs> But I haven't I finished the quest. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, it's funny because uh, I'm gonna say that after you've already walked through the gate on the on the live stream, so that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, <laughs> but the 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 way that your you know your development process is gonna go is always like, hey, we wanna uh, we wanna add wearables, right? And some of you have brought that up that wearables are in the marketplace, but there's nothing there yet, right? So in order to add wearables, we're going to have to change the way that equipment works. And so equipment broke with the last patch and everybody was like, oh, it doesn't work right now. And it's like, OK, so now we've added this feature. Um, so when we get to, let's say, 0 0.65 or 0 0.7, there's going to be some other new feature that's going to come in and is probably going to break something else. But just know that we are addressing the things that break down as we add new features Ooh. so that those new I features lagged. can be there. I had just like a right as I went to jump over the lava, I had some frame stutter. <laughs> uh, Lucas, just... we are oh. testing random experiences and we will test experiences that are published in the gallery every Wednesday. So if you have a game that you designed in the game maker and you want us to play it, just at the vision X or Kamisaze over on very nice. You collected the silver key. Uh, over on Twitter, and then we can go uh, play your game, and we can tell you about all the different ways that it is broken, and <laughs> that's never bad for you. That's always good for you as a developer. If we can say, hey, you know, the game is good in this way, this is well built, this probably needs work, that just means that you're going to be ever closer to getting a winning... I love that you just jumped on that dude's head, like, I'm going to use you <laughs> as... <laughs> I'm uh, good. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, that's uh, generally the the way I treat NPCs. Like, how can I yeah, use this? <laughs> like, I'm gonna just yeah. But people do it all the time. I did it in Destiny as well, right? I just jumped on another friendly head so yeah. that I could jump up yeah. on this place where you're like, I am where you can't be. But anyway, so we'll break your game, <laughs> right? And we break your game on purpose so that we can say this is broken. Uh, like in my opinion, and this isn't not everybody feels this way. Um. But every time Alex tries to jump over the fence and hits that invisible wall, I ask myself, why don't you just make the fence taller? You know, because it's, in my opinion, an expectations thing of your users that they would say it would be cool if I could jump over this wall and prove how cool I am. But you've made it such a such a way where they think I want to jump over the wall and they cannot jump over the wall. So just make the wall taller, in my opinion. If it's a place you want to keep people out of, make it clear that they can't go there. Right. And then right. it's even sweeter when you make something that maybe is a secret, like this part of the wall actually has no collision, uh, like this, this house. Okay, that was actually pretty cool. <laughs> it's well-timed, by the way, well-timed, because I was like mid thinking about secrets and like you can walk in that house right there. Well, there you go. <clears throat> 
Oh, I like that throne. Kind of, uh, you know, obviously I think you could use a little something to make it uh, more detailed, but mm. uh, definitely that golden throne. It's got that like aura to it, that brightness. Uh, just made out of some regular blocks. <clears throat> Um, I, th I think this is supposed to open. Uh, Nemo's. The NPC can clip through assets if their AI told them the door was open. So, like, if there's... Uh, and this is something that is being addressed, but for now, if that gate could open or started open and the NPC was passing to go to the other side of it, they can easily just walk through it. But if the gate is closed when they attempt to path, then they will stop at it. So there there are definitely uh, known things that we are working on. But it's really about like changing the physics midway. And if you put too much of that, uh, like physics collision changes Whoa, in the you middle of the game, then you could end <laughs> up with a lot of lag. So there's a certain balance. I love this guy. Yes, well, well played. But... It, is, is that one defending against the skeleton or trying to kill you? <laughs> uh, Val Valkyrie appears to be on, on my side here. So I think this uh, is supposed to open up. And for some reason, it's yeah, I can hear it. I, I can hear the we click. Do at least one NFT giveaway per stream. Uh, typically, they happen in the last like half of a stream. But we've definitely had streams just to mix it up. Uh, where we've done it in the first 10 minutes and just hung out and had a bunch of fun playing games, making games, uh, making arts, all that sort of thing. So uh, join us. You can join us next week. Uh, what? On, what? what day is <laughs> it today? Denied. It's Wednesday now. So if you join <laughs> us at 1800 GMT on Saturday, there will be another NFT giveaway with Wizzy the Blue NFT. Those are exclusive to these streams. Uh, so you can only get them by watching here live and then you can use that winnie the wizzy i wanted to call it winnie the blue look at me i'm <laughs> such a duh uh so you can use wizzy the blue in your games that you make in the sandbox game maker winnie alex the blue winnie the poo like the time is now 6 19 p.m your local time yeah i would say if uh, if you wanted us to check out your game i saw there was at least one more request in the chat um remind us uh, on Twitter and remind us in the next Wednesday stream and we'll check that out. Um, yep. And I, I don't know, you must have missed it, Joseph. This this gate smashed closed in front of my face. I was going to try to see if I could get out. And It says you can, uh, the user who created the, the game right now says you can run around the left side, right side. Yeah, right that's, side. I saw this and I'm like, oh, I'll go down there. And that's when I went to the gate and the gate was just, just nope. Mm. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So you got to go outside. So what I'm noticing, and, and this may just be me, but it seems like the broadcaster has an interval that it doesn't need to have. It just needs to be open. Um, so the silver key, when you Ooh, get close, <laughs> wherever the broadcaster device is, nice, uh, you can make it so that it only happens once. And then after it goes off, another uh, like let's say a little calculator or something that you can't see can destroy the first one so that it never happens twice uh, so that may be something to look at and if you're interested in that I know that uh, <clears throat> you can watch Andy Ritchie streams Andy Ritchie streams multiple times a week with different things so uh, they could give you probably an in-detail look on that or if you're looking for more advanced tutorials uh, I know that Cyber Dragon is streaming like highly complex designs regularly over on the sandbox academy twitch uh so check those out if you want to learn uh how to make games uh or things like that we are of course here we are here saturday where we'll teach you new skills with the game maker uh we will also teach you on uh on wednesdays when we play your game in in a kind of kind of way like hey you did this you could do this instead and then you can join us on mondays for box edit streams all right, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it back out unless that <gasps> that lever opens the gate. So I'm I'm thinking that maybe your oh. messages are are yeah. overlapping. 
Uh, so make sure make sure that you use unique messages for each uh, each door and stuff uh, to prevent. Sure. Oh. Uh, if you are in the game client, which Ooh. is not public <laughs> yet, inside the game client, you can. Very nice, very nice. Look at the skelly guns. Get them. Oh. Get them. Th there's like They're critical hits. You. Do you notice that? Oh, the the screen like shakes. Yeah. There's like a. Boom. Oh. oh. I never noticed that before. You know, you didn't block or parry there. I am disappointed. I well, you know, I was taken off guard so <laughs> I'm, I'm still getting used to the parry existing no um, worries i know it's and i'm not a parry kind of guy anyway controls oh i love to parry like what are you I'm, gonna do you're stunned I you know what i mean like I, it's over for you it i just want to smash the attack button over and over again come on nope uh the timing's weird on this one uh, Andy only streams currently, from what I'm aware, on Twitch. Uh, we may... Uh, I am working on a list of new, like, tips for live streamers uh, where I can teach people how to use different services that allow them to... Uh, like, we use, officially, we use Restream.io as a way to stream on multiple platforms at once. But if you do that... You are not eligible for things like the partners program that you have on certain platforms, whether it's on YouTube or you're on Twitch or what have you. If you are using those partner programs, you also agree to exclusivity. Uh, and I know that Andy gets to enjoy uh, his, I think it's affiliate, not partner at this point. Um, so Andy has the, abil the ability to have subscribers that can do the emotes, which is why you see so many of these little like uh, rappers with the sandbox logo chains going off in the chat here so uh for now i'm sure they'll just be over on twitch um, all right oh so jackie I... i'm sorry i gotta delete a comment on facebook no scammers if you guys are in here you're trying <laughs> to scam it's not gonna work i see you i actually leave the restream chat open all week long i never close it so if there's ever like a scam comment at all on any of our videos i'm like boom gone bye you know <clears throat> any time of day oh this is nice i like this this is i didn't even like it didn't even occur to me yep. that i that i was trying to go backwards <laughs> i was like i want to complete the quest that i have so there seems to be another um price or Prince Ton Tiger, Prince Ton Tiger. Sorry about the name. Uh, playing Second Life. Uh, this is not similar to Second Life. This, uh, what you are seeing, is a game making software and platform uh, where it is absolutely free for anybody to make any game that they like. Uh, releasing soon, you will find that we have a seasonal content that is coming that will include games that have been made with this game maker software, including social spaces where you can hang out with your friends, chat it up, do the thing in the same way that Second Life is. Um, but all of the games that you'll see uh, here are made by community members. And so we have also got a game maker program. Uh, and I don't mean an app, but like a, uh, a sponsor sort of system. Uh, where we dedicate funds to game creators uh, that have been approved as game creators uh, to help make games for our seasonal content. And so you'll see, as part of the Explorers season uh, coming soon, people will, look at that, avoid that last jump. Forget about it. I totally would have skipped that too, by the way, Alex. <laughs> uh, you know, the... Uh, Take the, the path of la least resistance. Oh, I, I screwed up almost every word in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, the, uh, you know, the, there are lots of different games that you'll be able to play when the metaverse goes live. Uh, the first people that will be able to play those games will be playing them by uh, being landowners. Uh there will be a thousand seasonal tickets that will be distributed in a lottery to landowners. So uh, look out for more information on this coming soon. 
but uh, a lot of people will be able to play games. Uh, those games will have a rollout period. Uh, I'm really hoping to get a ticket myself. We are not guaranteed to get them because it's just a uh, random distribution to land owners. So uh, this area is interesting. It looks like it needs to be uh, cultivated with a little content. Looks like but, my backyard. Uh, there you go. <laughs> we are had a backhoe in there. Yes. No, no, oh, okay. they, they replaced some pipes uh, back in like fall and they totally like oh. dug up my backyard and left like broken pottery pipes like like ceramic pipes and giant rocks oh, and all sorts of stuff sticking out of the ground i'm like well that's not pleasant and then i was gonna yeah. let my landlord know about it because like hey winter's over you know maybe we can like fix this and i was gonna let my landlord know this week and then i woke up this morning and and there was backhoes in my backyard filling in with nice fresh dirt so huh i think I'm not 100% positive. I um, think transparent Arctic, blocks would work better for clouds. Arctic, there will be a land sale coming. News on that. I cannot tell you. But I have seen it in my Monday meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, more information keep, soon. Keep an eagle eye. Soon. Keep an eagle eye on... Uh, uh, what's it called? <laughs> <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Yep, one of those places. Slash sandbox game. Uh, and then if you uh, also follow us on medium.com slash sandbox hyphen game, you can check that out. And uh, we will announce all the details of the upcoming land sale when they become available. Uh, the deals are constantly uh, being arranged, being worked. Uh, and then we have to have our team on the back end also. <laughs> I love seeing Alex. It's like, are you are you molding something right there that I just can't see it? It looks like something is being created. Look at that. You're making like a little cloud or like a glass box or something. I was just I, I was just noodling. Yeah, but the <laughs> uh, the the ticketing system that we're using is, I think, uh, a nice, fun, fair distribution way of guaranteeing that those folks uh, who bought some land have some first dibs getting into the metaverse. Uh, and so that that will be the first showcase of a feature that you can do as a game developer, which is to say, do you own this NFT? If yes, you can play my game, right? So if you want to have a pay to play system in your game uh, and you've developed a game you think people are going to be wanting to play, then you can make it so that this unique NFT and those NFTs will be distributed again at random. Uh, and so we'll have those 1,000 for the season. And then people who are playing during the season are uh, eligible to win some sand in our play to earn system. And then once that's all done, uh, we're going to go open the lid, right? Uh, actually, during the season, from what I understand, uh, anybody will be able to go into the social hubs. So we've got a bunch of plans to make sure that you can come hang out, interact with people like myself and Alex from the team. Uh, so more details as they become available. What you doing here, Alex? Uh, well, I said I was going to do the tweet after the stream was over, so we're just uh, we're setting up a render. Very good. And hopefully not crashing the frame rate here. I was feeling a little bit of lag on my desktop. Yeah, it's doing so. okay. It's like just the app, I think, that's kind of doing the lag, not yeah. so much the uh, PC. It looks good. So, uh, Mimo, a 4x4 four four land is not sold in that type of arrangement, actually. Um, right now, the arrangements can be 1x1, one 3x3, one, 6x6, three 12x12, three, six six, 12 12, or 24x24. 24 24. Um, no guarantee on any of those particular sizes being available in any particular land sale. Uh, but that said, the... An individual one by one land with no assets is 1,011 sand. Uh, this was set way back in pre sale 4.2 when the community said, I don't want to pay with ETH. I don't want to pay with dollars. I want it to be associated with a sand price. And so we did a conversion at that time uh, from the pre sale price, which was like 908 sand. And then we already always had in the plan that the regular release would be. 10% more than the pre-sale 4 release because we are in the public uh, Oh, I like that Ooh, that's real It's real dark and evil, Alex <laughs> Real dark and evil bunny out here 
but uh, the preseason games, the games themselves will not be multiplayer, but there will always be a type of like overworld chat where you can interact with people and say, hey, I like this game or like, hey, I'm stuck here. What did you guys do? Uh, and you'll be able to interact cross in the whole metaverse. And then you can also interact with people who are concurrently playing your game, just not user to user at this time. So there, there will be more uh, information on, oh yeah, that's ominous. A lot of shadow, a lot of shadow. That's real ominous. Look at this evil bunny. <laughs> Get the heck out of here. You thought oh, Easter yeah. was happy. It's not happy. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah. These renders right now that Alex is doing is done with a service called Light Tracer. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't, uh, this isn't a free function of the sandbox. It's not, uh, it's, it is not officially supported by us because we don't make the software, but you can always import your assets into it and then do a nice render where you can make it animate, spin, do all this sort of thing uh, with this software. Uh, it's one that we like. But uh, it does cost money, from my understanding. Is that right, Alex? There is a free version. I don't believe it renders videos on the free version. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to just do a 2D, uh, you can. You can make transparent background PNGs. You can do all sorts of nice stuff with it. There's uh, there's a web version. It runs out of your browser, uses your GPU. Um, I prefer the... I I'm old-fashioned. I like desktop programs. And, uh, and I, sure. do, it's, I think it's $60 a year for this and for me for me personally it's totally worth it um i use it for work all the time um yeah and uh and yeah m and most of most of our partners uh have received their assets or or have approved their assets after having seen them in a in a light trace surrender so smurfs care bears uh and plenty more have have this is this is my delivery vehicle for our content because sure. it's and you I know that... it's it's hard to always show it in the game maker we do that too but it's uh uh, right. This is a nice way For to put me them on display. I like the way that these look in terms of like a marketability, right? If you want somebody to see something that you make and you make a social post about it and you're an artist and you're saying, hey, come buy this because it's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're taking it and you're putting it into your own custom light engine. So you can say, this is my version of ideal lighting for this as Alex is playing with it. Mm -hmm. But the... Uh, for each individual person, right? Or each individual creation, this may be different, right? You may find something where like, um, I've seen there are creators coming out of Japan and they'll make something that's super cutesy, right? And they want to do this animation where it's like, oh yeah, I'm cute, look at me, kawaii, right? Uh, and the light is pretty much just flat light because that's a really nice light for, hey, I'm happy, right? But in this situation, at what Alex, what you're doing, making it like that, like ominous, like I'm Batman, but I'm a bunny, <laughs> you know. Uh, I think that's that's uh, light tracer is kind of the only way to go. In you know, th I'm sure there are other options, but I really like this one personally. I I love light tracer. It's so easy to use once you get get the hang of it. If you've ever done any sort of 3D graphics with like Blender or something, it should have some familiar tools. Um, it is there are some limitations on it like you can't do your own uh modeling you can arrange <laughs> stuff um but uh but you can't do modeling you can't create new animations in the software at least not yet um it's primarily just a rendering tool uh so what i used to put these things in blender so i would export uh from vox edit i put them in blender and then i have to set up my camera and my lights and my whole scene and time it all and stuff and as you can see from from what i set up here i just i set the length of the animation it has two main presets where you can you can either do a 360 spin around the whole thing or you can do kind of a wobble uh view which is what we're doing for this one because we've our animation on the front is the primary thing we're looking at uh so we do mm -hmm. the little wobble you can set up the degree amounts and then you can set up the duration of the animation so how how uh quickly it goes through you can either loop or stretch your animation that comes from box edit uh and how that um is timed with the overall uh spin or loop transition uh, of the camera um you can use um hdr lighting uh with um uh, panoramic hdrs uh to to get bounce lights all around and yeah it's just it's super easy to set up what what i what i did on screen just now in the past five minutes 
would probably take me at least like 20, 30 minutes in Blender to fiddle with it and get it the way I wanted. Um, you know, there's more you can do with Blender, but uh, this this works really great and it exports right to a, to a convenient video format. So it's very fast, very easy to use. I love it. And, the, and they've wanna... been super great in supporting our GLTF exports uh, from Vox Edit. So we, we appreciate them greatly. Well, there's a, a question in the chat that I want to answer, but also confirm that I'm correct, frankly, because I don't play with it all that much. But the uh, will we be able to replace the model of an asset after we set up the behaviors and components? And it's my understanding that you, you would want to create a preset in order for that to be a thing, right? uh yeah so we used to be able to switch out for a different model and i think that was disabled because different models with their gems and catalysts have different properties so it would mess up the values that you have set i mean you, like you could clip them but it might not it might make changes to your game that you're not expecting when you do that um I, I'm not 100% sure that was the reason, but I think that had something to do with it. Um, and yeah, I think I think if you set as a preset, you can then apply a preset to another model. But presets are kind of weird right now, so I, I don't want to give instructions on something that might be changing in the next update. <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, like I, that could be true of anything, but but I know specifically presets are something that's being worked on to be like fixed and changed. So, um, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Uh, right now, I would say, um, most of the th there's only so many settings. I know it's kind of annoying, but there's only so many settings on behaviors right now that, um, yeah, I would. I would just, you know, try to get as close to the asset that you want to be your final asset first and then set up your behaviors and stuff. But uh, if you need to, it only takes like a minute to kind of copy and paste all the info over from one asset to another if you need to. Um, so that uh, is our bunny. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to try to answer this question. Kirsch, yeah, you asked over on uh, Twitch.tv. Yeah, I had to look at the URL. I am, am getting tired now. Uh, <laughs> you asked if you could sell your games as NFTs. Um, so and from a technical standpoint, the land is a wrapper for the other NFTs uh, and holds the code that you create with the game maker, right? Uh, so in a purely technical answer, no. Uh, theoretically, you can sell your skills to anyone. Uh, I imagine that most landowners would like to rent you their land where in that sense um you could try to do the opposite like connect with somebody who wants to make some money on a game but if i can be frank i think that that's not the best choice for you personally if you made a game and you think you can make money on it in such a way where you could probably sell the game to someone else so that they could make money on it i would think that you would want to just publish it and then make the money on it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and obviously you can do whatever you like, but uh, if you sell your service as a creator, then you're essentially selling all of the profit that you can make on your creation. Uh, so totally up to you. Uh, you know, do whatever you like there, but the, the group uh, section in our Discord where you can collaborate with people is probably the best place to sell your skills as a game designer. If you say, hey, I already know how to make a game here. Uh, then you could always connect with somebody there and then they could potentially pay you on an agreed amount of the sand profits that they make if that is the case. But there's a lot of different ways to go about that. So uh, my advice would be if you already have a land or if you would want to rent a land to publish a game that you're sure could earn money uh, yourself to make the money. But, you know, that's you can do whatever. <laughs> all right so we are 40 minutes past our end time i know we've been ha yes sir hanging out having fun um answering some good questions here so uh i think we are going to call it a night because it is actually night for me here now well six yeah six forty almost night it's it's weird now that it's after daylight savings time so uh anyway uh thank you everybody for watching keep an eye out on my twitter it's there's going to be um a poll in the next few minutes 
to mm-hmm. uh, to decide if we are going to go with evil bunny eyes or cute bunny eyes for the view on OpenSea for this asset. Both animations will be available on the asset in the sandbox dashboard and game maker. Uh, but OpenSea is only going to display one, so I need your help to decide which one it's going to be. Are we going to go for cute or creepy? So keep an eye out on my Twitter, and uh, we will see you all again on Saturday. Right? All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. All right. 1800 GMT. I'll see you there. All right. Have a good one. Bye, everybody.